Thank you for choosing a Singer Overlock. I'm sure you'll be glad you did. The Overlock brings innovative and professional sewing to your home, but best of all, it will cut your sewing time in half. This video has been designed to familiarize you with your new sewing machine so you can take full advantage of its features. So, let's get started. Selecting any Singer product is a wise choice, but we're here to tell you why teaming an overlock with your traditional sewing machine is the right choice. Whether you're an experienced high volume sewer who needs to save time, a creative sewer looking for inventive design capability, or a new sewer interested in cleaner, neater construction, you'll love the advantages of the Singer Overlocks. So sit back and let us show you what a Singer Overlock is, how it operates, what it does, and why it will make sewing faster and more fun than ever. Please note, we have used a variety of Singer Overlock models in this video. Although your overlock may look different than the ones we have used to demonstrate a particular technique, your overlock operates in exactly the same way. Please follow the steps in this video for correct use of your new overlock. The Singer Overlock is a versatile, special-purpose sewing machine that serves as a supplement to your conventional machine. Known in the garment industry as a serger, the overlock is easily identifiable by the number of threads it uses and by its overlocking capability, produced by loopers which work together to actually knit stitches. The overlock does not replace your conventional machine any more than a microwave replaces your oven. Both have their own uses. Unlike a traditional sewing machine, the overlock performs three distinct operations simultaneously. It sews, trims, and overcasts raw edges all in one high-speed step. In fact, the overlock can sew between two and three times the speed of a conventional model, roughly 1,500 stitches per minute, and it guarantees fast and professional finishes every time. In the simplest terms possible, the Singer Overlock streamlines garment construction. The Overlock excels at self-finished narrow seams, rolled and blind-stitched hems, and overcast edges to protect fabric from fraying. It is ideal for applying elastic, ribbons, lace, and ribbing, essential for making perfect gathers, and invaluable when it comes to reinforcing the stress areas of garments such as leotards and swimwear. Just a reminder, although the appearance of overlocks vary, they all operate as described in this video. It can be used with four or three threads. And through a simple combination of needle position, threading method, and tension adjustment, it can place the following four distinct professional stitch types at your fingertips. Three thread overlock. This stitch is great for knits and seaming on common fabrics. Three thread flat lock perfect for butted or lapped seams and ornamental stitching with decorative thread. Three thread wrapped edge overlock, the best choice for sewing narrow rolled hems or ornamental edges. Four thread ultra stretch mock safety stitch, the best bet for medium to heavyweight stretchy fabrics such as sports knits and swimwear. Now we would like to acquaint you with some of the other outstanding features of the Singer overlocks. The Singer Overlock comes equipped with an on-off power switch and light. The Singer Overlocks do not use regular sewing machine needles. Rather, use flat shanked industrial 2054s. Please refer to your operator's guide to ensure the correct procedure for insertion and removal of needles. The tension knobs on the Singer Overlocks are color coded and each thread has its own numbered tension control. There is also a readily accessible stitch length control dial for quick and easy stitch adjustments. The overlock also comes with two built-in trimming knives. One is movable, the other is a fixed lower blade. Together, they work like a pair of scissors to shear away any excess seam allowance as you sew. The lower knife needs to be changed periodically. Please follow the easy instructions in your manual. The overlocks create different stitch types through the various combinations of needles and loopers. There are two loopers, a left or lower looper and a right or upper looper. Another plus is Singer's exclusive flip and sew panel, which converts your overlock into a free arm machine that allows you to sew cuffs, sleeves, and other hard to sew areas. 
And as a special convenience, Singer has made sure that the hand wheel rotates in the same direction as on your regular machine to eliminate any confusion as you move between the overlock and your standard equipment. And those are some of the overlock basics. Now on to the threading procedure. Your overlock comes pre-threaded, so you can begin sewing immediately. But as you can see, we've unthreaded it to show you just how easy the threading process is. Overlock thread is traditionally cross-wound on cones or tubes to accommodate the high speeds and large quantities required for overlock stitching. You can, however, use regular spools if you so desire. Overlock or serger thread is usually smaller in diameter to help create smooth, flat seams and hems. A whole host of threads can be used, silk, cotton, or metallic. Even lightweight yarns and buttonhole twists. These, however, should be rewound on a cone so they flow freely. To thread. First, raise the telescopic thread guide holder as far as possible and set the guides so that they are located right above the spool pins. Place the thread cones on the spool stands. Here's a tip. It is a good idea to use different colored threads when learning to use the overlock. This way you can see the different function of each thread in forming the stitch and get an idea of which tension dials might need adjusting. Now, open the looper door and remove the cylinder cover. Note that a threading chart is diagrammed on the inside of the looper door and that the various thread guides are color-coded for your convenience. The right looper guide is orange. Taking the right looper thread between thumb and forefinger, slide it through the top orange guide and then around the orange tension disc, making certain it is properly pulled into the discs. Then, sequentially following the lower orange marks, lead the thread up to the right looper. Use the tweezers provided in the accessory box to guide the thread through the looper eyelet, making sure to draw out about two inches of thread in the process. Then, using the same diagram, follow the yellow marks to thread the left looper, the green marks to thread the right needle, and the blue marks to thread the left needle. For best results, always draw about two inches of thread from the needle eye, and remember that the threading of needle eyelets is easier when the needle bar is lowered and the movable knife is set in the non-operating position. Now, simply replace the cylinder cover, lower the knife if necessary, close the looper door, pull all the threads to the left of the presser foot, and you're ready to sew. Once your overlock has been threaded, the steps for changing a thread are a snap. Simply cut it, replace the cone with the new thread, tie the new thread to the old with a square knot, clip the ends, raise the presser foot, make a note of the tension setting, then turn them to zero, and then sew the new thread through the machine slowly till the knot reaches the needle. At this point, the thread must be cut and manually threaded through the eyelet, the knot, however, will pass easily through the looper. Remember to return the tension dials to their original numbers. At the start of this video, we listed the four different stitch types you could achieve with your overlock. We now would like to show you the correct needle position and appropriate tension adjustment needed to create these various stitches. If you wish, you can follow along by referring to the handy reference chart in the operator's guide. The overlock can sew standard width 3.5 millimeter and wide 5.2 millimeter overedge seams. The following needle positions, however, are for standard 3.5 millimeter width seams, and the tension dial suggestions are average settings for medium weight fabric with standard number 80 polyester thread. Please refer to the tension settings shown in your operations manual and suggested guides. Adjust tensions to suit your fabric and thread. For best results, tension should be adjusted in increments of 0.5. The three-thread overlock is made up of three threads and uses one needle and two loopers. To create, please thread the upper or right looper, orange, the lower or left looper, yellow, and the right over-edge needle, green. Set the orange tension dial at 1.5, the yellow tension dial at 1.5, and the green tension dial at 2.5. Here we see the three-thread overlock stitch, 
overedging this placemat. The three thread flat lock. This stitch uses one needle and two loopers. To create, please thread the upper or right looper, orange, the lower or left looper, yellow, and the right over edge needle, green. Set the orange tension dial at 1.0, the yellow tension dial at 2.0, and the green tension dial at 0.5. Here we see the three thread flat lock being used for ornamental stitching with a decorative thread. The three thread wrapped edge overlock stitch uses one needle and two loopers. To create, thread the upper or right looper, orange, the lower or left looper, yellow, and the right over edge needle, green. Set the orange tension dial at 1.5. Set the yellow tension dial at 6.0 and the green tension dial at 2.0. Here we see the three thread wrapped edge overlock being used to sew a narrow rolled hem. The four thread ultra stretch mock safety stitch is made up of a three thread overlock stitch with an additional stitch in the center for reinforcement. To create, thread the upper or right looper orange, the lower or left looper yellow, then thread both the left over edge needle blue and the right over edge needle green. Set the orange tension dial to 1.0, the yellow tension dial to 1.5. Set the blue tension dial at 3.0 and the green tension dial at 2.0. Here we see the four thread ultra stretch mock safety stitch adding strength to this bathing suit. So those are the overlocks versatile stitch types. And here are three tips to help you achieve the best results when you make your stitch selection for your machine. Number one, the specifications given above were for creating standard 3.5 millimeter over edge widths when sewing with only the right needle. Remember, that by simply moving the needle from right position to left position and modifying the tension dials and threading paths accordingly, you can easily adjust the seam width to 5.2 millimeter for decorative sewing or when working with heavier fabrics. Number two, by simply turning the stitch dial on the front of the overlock, you can change the size of your stitches. The dial on this machine should be set to 3 millimeters for normal sewing. Adjust the stitch length to 4 millimeters when sewing heavyweight fabrics such as quilting and to 2 millimeters when sewing lightweight fabrics such as lining fabric, crepe, etc. And you will obtain excellent seams without puckering. Number three, please do not forget that the tension dials are part of the Overlock's one turn system. As the number on the dial increases, the thread tension becomes tighter. As a result, manipulating one or more tension controls affects the character of the stitch because it changes the way the threads loop together. With specific tension adjustments, the overlock can stitch a wide variety of threads, fabrics, seams, hems, and decorative treatments. Here are some examples of balanced and unbalanced thread tension. This is a perfectly balanced stitch formed by two loopers and one needle. Orange upper and yellow lower looper threads form a neat smooth chain at the raw edge. Green needle thread forms flat stitches without puckers. Here are some unbalanced tensions. Upper looper too tight. Orange upper looper thread pulls yellow lower looper thread to top side of fabric. To correct, Loosen upper looper tension so threads interlock at raw edge. Lower looper too tight. Yellow lower looper thread pulls orange upper looper thread to bottom side of fabric. To correct, loosen lower looper tension until stitches lie flat and smooth on fabric. Right needle too tight. Fabric puckers or draws up lengthwise when green needle thread is too tight. To correct, loosen needle thread till fabric relaxes. Right needle too loose. Needle thread, green, forms loose loops underneath fabric. To correct, tighten needle tension for flat smooth stitches. For further tension adjustments, please refer to your instruction manual. Another outstanding feature of the overlock that will relieve sewing tension of the human sort is the differential feed. Because this device allows for the even feeding of stretch or sheer fabrics,
the age-old frustration of creating gathers or ruffles is gone forever. The differential feed is also very effective when it comes to overedging stretch fabrics and fabrics cut on the bias, as well as for easing in set-in sleeves or skirt hems. For example, the gathered overedge seam is most suited for shirring sleeves, yokes, front and back bodices, and skirt hems in stretch fabrics before assembling into the garment. To set the differential feed adjusting lever, open the looper cover and loosen the adjusting lever thumb screw. Slide the lever downward below the center mark to gather, then retighten the screw. Please note, the setting position of the lever will differ depending on the material being sewn and the amount of feed for shirring. When it comes to employing the differential feed for the sewing of a stretch over edge, ideal for decorative collars, sleeves, and skirt hems on loosely knit and woven fabrics, just follow the above procedure in reverse. Simply loosen the adjusting lever and slide it upward above the center mark to stretch, and then retighten. And please note, whether gathering or stretching, always remember to reset the adjusting lever to the center mark for normal overedge stitching. What you are looking at now is one of the Overlock's many optional accessories. It's called a fabric separator, and it works in tandem with the differential feed. A fabric separator is an extremely helpful aid in that it allows you to gather one layer of fabric while keeping the other layer flat. To use, attach the separator to the front of your machine. Set the differential feed adjustment lever to gather, and then begin sewing, feeding the fabric till one or two stitches are in place. Then, raise the presser foot, leaving the needle in the fabric. Place the separator between the layers, and then continue sewing, holding layers separately and guiding the fabric along the seam guide while allowing it to feed freely. And that's all there is to it. Before one starts to sew, it is a good idea to get into the habit of running through the Overlock Checklist for Ultimate Sewing to ensure the safe and smooth operation of your Overlock machine. Make sure that your machine is properly threaded and the tension dials are set accordingly, that your needles are new and inserted properly, that the lint area is free of lint, that the pressure has been correctly adjusted, that the knives are sharp, and that the differential feed adjustment lever is in the correct position. Remember, overlooking any one of these seven areas can cause poor sewing. Therefore, it is imperative that you always run through this checklist before you sew. We would now like to guide you through some sewing projects, from simple gift ideas like placemats to more involved projects like lingerie and skirts. In an effort to demonstrate just how easy the overlock can accomplish a whole host of construction techniques, everything from curves and corners to pin tucking, decorative edging, rolled hems, and the application of lace or elastic. As you know, decorative overlocking, using the overlocked edge, lends a crisp, one-of-a-kind finish to placemats and napkins. And with the overlock, a wide array of contrasting threads such as woolly nylon, lustrous rayon, metallic, silk, narrow ribbon, lightweight yarn, or pearl cotton can be used to lend that final ornamental touch. It is, however, important to note that when using decorative thread in your overlock, it is only necessary to re-thread the orange upper looper. To do so, loosen the tension slightly. Follow the normal threading sequence, remembering to skip the second orange thread guide, and then sew. To create this placemat, you would thread the machine with an attractive pearl cotton. Then stitch along the edge of the placemat, beginning at the straight edge. To master the outside curve, begin trimming at an angle until desired trimming or stitching position is reached. Then stitch guiding the fabric by moving it to the right in front of the presser foot. Watch knives, not needles. Lift presser foot as necessary on tight curves to ease fabric beneath it. When you reach the starting point, leave the needle in the fabric. Raise the presser foot, then fold the fabric back and continue sewing. 
Be sure to overlap previous stitches for circular edges. Stop and lift presser foot. Shift fabric so it is behind the needle. Then stitch straight off edge to prevent gradual looping. And here's your placemat. The results speak for itself. Another easy gift idea is a napkin, a project which covers rolled hemming and corners. Two tricky areas that are now, thanks to the overlock, a cinch. To make a perfect rolled hem, first raise the needle into the highest position. Take out the front screw. Remove the throat plate, pulling thread off chaining finger as you do. Attach the rolled hem plate, making sure the width is set at M. Turn stitch length dial to F. Tighten yellow lower looper tension to create a smoother rolled edge. Place fabric on plate right side up and stitch. To ensure that the starting threads are not caught, give them a little tug as you begin. Now to complete a napkin. Attach the rolled hem plate to the machine as just demonstrated. Rethread the woolly nylon. Then sew along the edge of the fabric. To make perfect outside corners, just stitch one edge through. Then bring the fabric around to the front and simply stitch the next edge through. For inside corners, clip the corner of the desired seam allowance. Then merely straighten fabric and sew straight through. Now here, take a good look at your gift ideas. Napkin and placemat. Two projects made easy with your overlock. Next, we'd like to show you some creative touches that lend themselves to more delicate fabrics. So we've selected this dusty rose camisole and slip with the aim of demonstrating how the overlock handles pin tucking, spaghetti straps, elasticized waistbands, and the application of lace to borders and hems. Let's start with the camisole. A smart way to begin is to make the pin tucks in your fabric before cutting out the camisole. To do so, decide where you would like the tucks and mark those spots with a water-soluble sewing pen. Here's a tip. Just because an accessory has a single name, don't let that mislead you into thinking that it only performs one function. The Overlock's rolled hem plate can also make pin tucking a snap. Just turn the movable knife into the non-operating position. Attach the rolled hem plate. Fold the fabric in two, keeping the top side up. Place the fabric under the presser foot with the fold resting against the edge of the throat plate. Then lower the foot and stitch using the balanced three thread overlock tension. Perfect pin tucks every time. Now cut out the camisole. Stitch the side seams using a four thread safety stitch. Reattach the rolled hem plate and finish the bottom and top edges with it. Then, still using the rolled hem plate, make your spaghetti straps. To do so, sew a chain six inches longer than the desired length of the strap. Place the chain on center of right side of fabric. Fold fabric over the chain and stitch along the raw edge. Then simply pull on the chain and turn strap right side out. Now attach the straps to the camisole and you're halfway home. To complete the slip, once you've cut out your fabric, first sew one side seam using a four thread mock safety stitch. The next step is to attach the lace to the bottom. Applying the lace to your slip's hem is best achieved with the flat lock stitch. This is an ornamental overlock seam that can be effectively used on the right side and the wrong side, as well as in the center of a garment. And it is just as commonly used on sweatshirts. The looping is created by sewing the wrong sides of the garments together, as it is for the application of lingerie. Here, the right sides were sewn to produce the ladder-like stitch. To add a lace border to your slip hem, please make sure that the knife is rotated into the non-operating position. Then, place the fabrics with the wrong sides together and sew seam, guiding along the inside edge of the throat plate. Then, simply pull the fabric layers apart to open the seam and make the stitches lie flat. Next, simply sew up the other side seam, again using the four thread mock safety stitch. The final step is to apply elastic to the waistband. To do so, first rotate the knife into the non-operating position. Next, divide the waistline and elastic into quarters and pin mark. Then, lay the elastic on top of the fabric so the raw edges meet and line them up with the edge of the throat plate. 
After securing the elastic with two or three stitches, run the machine so the fabric feeds while stretching the elastic with your right hand a quarter at a time, making sure to remove your pins. This allows you to keep your left hand free to hold the fabric straight as you sew. To finish, simply turn down the edge of the elastic and top stitch on your regular machine. And here it is, a delicate slip to accompany your camisole. Both made as easy as ABC with the overlock. Our final project is both practical and stylish. This lovely knit top and skirt. And as part of their construction, we will cover the techniques of twill tape insertion, often used to reinforce the stress areas of knitted garments, ribbing, and the use of the blind hem foot. Let's start with the knit top. Here are your instructions. After you cut out the garment body, you're going to sew the shoulder seams using a four-thread mock safety stitch. And as you do, simultaneously insert a twill tape into the seam for added reinforcement. Then begin to stitch, feeding the tape or ribbon through the hole in the presser foot to help stabilize the seam. And that's that. Step number two. Stitch the sleeves to the armholes, matching the center sleeve top to the shoulder seam. Step number three. Sew up the side seams. Sew one side and sleeve seam from lower edge of garment to lower edge of sleeve, making certain to match the underarm seam. Then repeat the process for other side and sleeve seam. Step number four. Apply ribbing to the neck band using the in the round method. To do so, stitch ends of each ribbing piece. Fold ribbing pieces in half lengthwise, wrong sides together. Then divide the neckline edge and ribbing into fourths and pin mark. Pin ribbing to neckline right sides together matching markings. Place ribbing seam in center back. Now stitch the ribbing to the neckline, stretching it to ensure proper fit. Remove pins as you come to them. Step number five. Finish edges of sleeves using three thread overlock stitch. Step number six. Hem sleeves using the twin needles on your conventional machine. And finally, seal the top using a blind hem a stitch which provides a durable finish that is almost invisible. The blind hem foot is an optional accessory sold separately, or blind hemming can be done using the presser foot that is included with your machine. To blind hem, set the stitch length dial at 5. Turn up the hem allowance to the wrong side. Fold hem width back to the right side. Place fold of fabric along the vertical part of the guide, extending the raw edge under the guide. Then stitch the hem, making sure to barely catch the stitches in the fold. And now, last but not least, we conclude with the knit skirt. Once the shape has been cut, sew the side seams using a four-thread mock safety stitch. Then set up the overlock for a three-thread overlock stitch in order to make a casing in the top of the skirt for elastic. Fold the casing down to the wrong side of the fabric and back to the right side. Then, use the three thread overlock to stitch along the folded edge, making certain that the raw edge is even with it. Be sure to leave approximately two inches open in order to insert the elastic. Next, slide the elastic into the casing, attaching a pin to one end to help ease the material through. Then secure the ends of the elastic using your conventional machine and close the casing with an overlock stitch. To finish up, you can hem your new skirt using either the blind hem demonstrated earlier or twin needle on your conventional machine. Placemats, napkins, camisoles, slips, skirts, and tops. The professional stitching capabilities of the Singer Overlock offer a wide world of practical and creative sewing options. Remember to always consult your operator's guide whenever questions regarding the maintenance or usage of your machine arise. And for further reference, may we recommend Singer's Sewing with an Overlock, published by Cy DeCasse Incorporated, a valuable addition to your sewing reference library where you can find all the techniques demonstrated in this video explained in an easy-to-follow, fully illustrated text. 
If you need assistance with your new Singer Overlock, or if you have questions concerning other Singer products, please call 1-800-4-SINGER.